If you're looking for a classic, easy to make, absolutely delicious weeknight meal, then you've come to the right place because this steak, pizzaiola, also known as carne de pizzaiola, is absolutely fantastic. What is up, my Comies? Chef Billy Parisi here, and you know we believe good homemade food from scratch tastes infinitely better, and we're gonna be hooking up this steak pizzaiola from scratch from start to finish. The first thing we need to do is pound out some steaks. I'm going to be using a strip loin steak. You can use sirloin, even flank steak that's sliced thin, but we need to pound it out to tenderize it. So go ahead and lay those steaks right down on a cutting board and using an extremely sharp knife, we are gonna slice them in half widthwise. Once they are sliced, we're just gonna set them to the side on a plate. Don't forget to wash that cutting board. And now what we're gonna do is lay a big piece of plastic wrap right down, covering it completely. Now go ahead and add that sliced strip loin steak right to the center of it, fold over the other side of the plastic wrap, and then we're going to gently, gently pound this out until it's about half the thickness that it is right now. So the reason we pound out the steak is so that it cooks quickly and also so that it tenderizes it, softening up all the tissue inside the meat makes it incredibly more juicy, tender, flavorful. It's the only way to do this recipe. So what you wanna do now is set that to the side on a sheet tray lined with parchment paper or a plate, whatever you've got. We're gonna put it in the refrigerator because we've got a few more things to do before we start cooking. Don't forget to clean up your cutting board again because we were pounding out raw meat on it. Now we need to move to the tomato portion. I'm gonna teach you how to concasse a tomato. Really what that means is peeling it, but we're gonna do it so that it's very easy to peel and it's about boiling and chilling in an ice bath. But look, if you don't wanna go that route, what you can do is buy tomatoes from the San Marzano region in Italy. They're fantastic. Get those whole peeled with the skin off, just like we're doing here. But you know what? If you're in peak tomato season, like the summertime, like I'm in right now, I'm gonna be using fresh tomatoes. So go ahead and add them to the cutting board. And what you wanna do now is sort of take the vine right off of them. And the next thing you wanna do is cut out the core on the top. Simply flip it over and slice an X right into the skin. This is perfect. Now go ahead and add them to a strainer or you can add them right to that boiling pot of water. It takes about 45 seconds to one minute for the tomato peelings to start coming off. You can see that right there. We're at a perfect time right now. Take the tomatoes off, go immediately into a large ice bath. So this can be a bowl, this can be a bucket, this can be whatever you got laying around a container that's filled with cold ice water. You wanna chill them immediately so they stop cooking. And after only a minute or two, they are nice and chilled. Take them out of the water and begin to peel them. You can use a little paring knife or honestly with your hands, they will literally pull right off. This is awesome. Now at this point, we want to see the tomatoes. And look, this can be tedious. I don't want you to worry about like taking so much extra time to remove these seeds that is stressing you out. You can leave them in there. I've done and read tons of tests that show that the sauce actually tastes just about the same. But because I was taught this way and so many classic Italian recipes have you seeding the tomatoes, we're gonna keep it true, my friends, because I'm all about authenticity. So slice the tomatoes in half, and then over a bowl, simply give it a gentle squeeze. You're not gonna get every seed out here. Please don't be crazy meticulous to make sure that every single seed is out. Just get a good amount of them out. Add them back to your cutting board, and right now we're going to roughly chop all of these if you need to learn how to roughly chop, be sure to check out my video on knife cuts. This will definitely help out for this rough chopped tomato. And let's stop right here because I know you're thinking, gosh, why am I going through all this? Homemade food does definitely taste better than anything out there, sometimes even restaurants. But you know what? It doesn't cost more money. It often just takes a little bit more time. And to me, it's completely worth it. You learn skills, you learn how to do things, and the food 
gosh, it just brings so many more smiles to your table and especially yourself. So don't freak out that this has taken an extra 10 or 15 minutes to conquer, say, these tomatoes. It's no big deal. But again, if you don't want to do it, go the can route or just simply not worry about seeding every single tomato. Now that we got them in a bowl, we're going to set them to the side and it's finally time to start cooking. So let's bring that pounded out strip loin steak from the refrigerator. We are now going to season it on both sides with some sea salt and fresh cracked black pepper. Let's head over to the cooktop in an extremely large rondeau pot, or if you have a very large saute pan, this is perfect. We're gonna add in some olive oil and over medium high heat, once the oil gently begins to smoke, it's perfect time to start cooking. So add in as many pieces of the steak as you can. It's totally cool to cook these off in batches, no big deal. What we're looking here is for a little bit of a brown sear on both sides of the steak. You're looking at maybe two to two and a half minutes per side. Remember, the steak is very, very thin. You can see that we got that nice sear. Let's go ahead and set them to the side on a plate and in that rondeau, turn the heat down just a little bit, maybe more to the medium low side of things. Add in some onions some finely minced garlic. What we're gonna do now is cook this for five to seven minutes, get a really nice caramelization on the onions and the garlic. It's gonna bring about so much more flavor to this steak pizzaiola recipe. You're gonna love it. And at this point, we're gonna deglaze with a little bit of white wine. I'm gonna be using an Italian Pinot Grigio. Lots of flavor in this wine. Try not to drink all of it. We need to save some of it for the recipe. We're gonna cook it down until au sec, which means almost gone. So the liquid has been absorbed into the air and into the onions and garlic. And now pour in all those delicious, roughly chopped, peak in season, concasse tomatoes. Now we're gonna stew these down over low heat. It's gonna take about 15 or 20 minutes. We want the tomatoes to break down a little bit, let the flavors infuse with the onion and garlic. We want all this goodness to take place. Once it has cooked down, we wanna season it with salt and pepper and then gently lay those seared off steaks right on top of the sauce. We're gonna put a cover on it and let it sit for five to six minutes over low heat. Now, traditionally, you wanna serve the steak pizzaiola up with a side dish. I've got a couple of options. My creamy polenta recipe is absolutely amazing. Super authentic, delicious, would be phenomenal with this recipe. Or I have some extra pasta laying over from the fettuccine Alfredo I made quite a while ago. So if you want to see how to make homemade pasta, definitely check out this recipe. In a pot of boiling water, we're just gonna add some of those noodle rounds right to it. This is also gonna take four to six minutes to cook. Once they are finished, go back over to the steak. Let's take a look. It smells amazing, you guys. So, so good here. Now we're gonna finish it with a little finely minced fresh oregano. And I'll stop right here. I'm finishing with fresh oregano. Here is a tip and trick for you guys. If you're using dry spices, you put them in at the beginning. If you're using fresh spices and herbs, you put them in at the end and you finish it with it because the flavors are so pungent, it really enhances it at the end. So that's what we're doing here. Toss it in, mix it in really well. And to plate it up, I simply take some of the steak out, put it on a platter or a plate, add some sauce to the top, Garnish with a little bit of fresh oregano leaf. The pasta's done. Simply add it to the leftover pizzaiola sauce and give it a toss. This is such an amazing, delicious weeknight meal. You can take shortcuts with the canned tomatoes, what will come together even quicker. But I need about an hour, folks. An hour will always get you an incredible meal that you'll be so proud of for your family and your friends at your dinner table. Golly, is this good? That's why I'm stuffing my face completely full of this amazing steak pizzaiola. And if you love classic, amazing Italian dishes, please be sure to check out my chicken cacciatore recipe. And if you love seafood, definitely, definitely check out my authentic Shapino recipe. We'll catch you on the next video.